Hi everyone, I'm George Farrar, and welcome to Jax 79, Jacksonville as it was in the year 1979. I'm pleased to bring you a great series looking at Jacksonville history in the years 1975 through to 1995. And I think it's fitting as I talk about uh, the years in Jacksonville history to talk with you in Jack 79 about Colts fever and how everyone in Jacksonville in 1979, it seemed, had Colts fever, at least, at least the people that gathered in the Gator Bowl in August 1979. So I'll talk a little bit about that with you because ultimately in the last year of this series, 1995, we'll have our very own NFL team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who uh, will begin playing. So this is so long before then, and so much is happening in 1979. In January 1979, Bob Graham is sworn in as governor of Florida. Bob Graham was a state senator from South Florida. He would be governor of Florida until 1987 and later serve as United States Senator. Meanwhile, in Jacksonville, we have Jake Godbold, our new mayor. He took over uh, as mayor uh, after Hans Tanzer resigned to run uh, unsuccessfully for governor. Uh, and ultimately, he was elected by the people in 1979 and uh, began his own term in his own right, on July 1st, 1979. And so we have a new mayor, and there's all of this excitement. There's this excitement around wooing an NFL team away from another city. And in ultimately his first year in office, Mayor Godbold is going to try to make this, this thing happen. So he's been freshly elected as mayor. And so he's going to go ahead and try to bring something really big to Jacksonville, an NFL team. Unheard of when you think about it. There had been talk and speculation in the past and different attempts. But this will turn out to be a very big deal for the city ultimately in the city's history. People were asked in August of 1979 to get on down to the Gator Bowl. Get on down to the Gator Bowl and take a seat in the Gator Bowl and wait ultimately for the mayor and Baltimore Colts owner Bob Ursay to arrive. Now, this is a picture of the Gator Bowl in the 1940s. Jacksonville, of course, is renowned for hosting the annual Florida-Georgia game. So uh, the Gator Bowl uh, had a long history of large gatherings of folks uh, to celebrate uh, and to uh, witness uh, sports. Uh, and uh, of course, remember back in the 1960s and 1960, there's a picture from 1961 of the Gator Bowl. In 1964, the Beatles performed uh, at the Gator Bowl to a big crowd. The Rolling Stones performed in the 1970s to a huge crowd at the Gator Bowl. So we've demonstrated in the past that we can pack them in, okay, just for the chance to demonstrate to an NFL owner that we, working together, can fill some seats. Ultimately, the idea would be bring the NFL team, the Colts, from where they were back then. They were in Baltimore, bringing them to Jacksonville. And you can see we had quite a, a sports and entertainment complex uh, back then. Uh, even at the beginning, uh, the Coliseum built in 1960, uh, what was then called the Gator Bowl, and uh, what was then called Wolfson Park, okay? So, so we have all these, these capabilities 
And so the idea was to sell this uh, to this NFL owner. And he would land in a helicopter uh, onto uh, the field in the Gator Bowl. And here we see the uh, big picture. Mayor Godbold points out NFL owner Bob Urze to the huge crowd. However, our effort was not successful because Urze wanted a new stadium. He had demands. Ultimately, he would stay in Baltimore until 1984. Then he would move the team in the middle of the night. In 1984, he would move them to Indianapolis. So, while all that's going on, okay, all of that uh, big hullabaloo at the Gator Bowl is going on, I have my first pair of glasses, and I'm ready to go to school. I've been tested, and they've decided to place me in preschool special ed classes at Southside Estates Elementary. I'm living with my father, Terry, and my stepmother, Pat, in Arlington on Morgana Road. I've got some great neighbors at this time. I'm going on visitations to see my mother uh, from time to time. So, you know, these are uh, big times in my life. Uh, this is a period in time where things are starting to come together for me, okay? The first couple years of my life were not really all that, okay? Uh, in 1978 and 79, things got better. And back then, though, the real big thing for me was seeing the Muppet movie. Uh, I really enjoyed the Muppets. They, there was a syndicated program in the evenings uh, on television I'd watch along with all the tons of shows I would watch and then uh, this is an old picture of the Arlington Theater this is a picture from the 1950s okay this is a picture from 1956 this is not a 1979 picture but this gives you the idea of where I was going to see the Muppet movie with my family in 1979 okay when it played uh, I went here with my family to this theater and saw it and it was not that far away from where I lived in Arlington uh, it's on Arlington Road uh, and you know special times uh, bring back a lot of good memories and it seemed back then that it was um, I guess when you went somewhere you know it was not not as much uh, of a of a hassle, I guess you would just you could just really go see a movie, you know. And, and some of these movies, these movie theaters that were out there, were uh, you know more I would call it say to scale. They're not big. Some of them were more intimate, okay. Uh, in especially in Arlington, there was a lot more of a choice back then because movies were bigger. It seemed to back then, um, the opportunities were different. Now this is a more modern picture of the interior of the Arlington Theater. Okay, so uh, it, I, what I remember the curtains. Okay, so that's something that was special uh, back then. Now this is a old picture of Regency Square Mall, which was at its retail zenith, at its height, at its paramount, uh, most amazingness. Uh, truly a shopping mecca. Okay, retail mecca. We're talking lots of stores and places to eat. Uh, this. I would say uh, 19, late 1960s, uh, possibly early 1970s. This is, though, a little bit different than from what I remember from some, some of the little interior things. It was a little bit different by the time I had come along a little bit. Uh, but uh, I would start in uh, the late 1970s going to the mall with my father, with my stepmother, with and to visit my mother, okay? I would be going through this mall with these great places um, and I'll talk more about them later on uh, so great times okay now in 1979 also we finally had the start of J. Turner Butler Boulevard named for the state legislator J. Turner Butler and he uh, was part of helping uh, one of the legislators that helped to create the Jacksonville Expressway Authority really helped to get road building going in Jacksonville so they began building and, and 
complete the first phase of the uh, J. Turner Butler Boulevard, and it would have tolls on it at that time, okay, till tolls were removed. Now, here we see the opening years of FJC, Florida Junior College at Jacksonville's downtown campus, okay? And here, the Fox Drive-In Theater opened in 1963 uh, off of Normandy Boulevard uh, near I-295. Of course, it's no more. Drive-In theaters were another thing that I remember from the late 1970s. Now, I never saw anything at the Fox Drive-In. I remember driving by it, seeing it uh, back years and years uh, ago when I lived on, on the west side. Um, but I really remember the Midway Drive-In uh, uh, on uh, Beach Boulevard near Southside Boulevard. And I also remember especially remember the University Boulevard Drive-In, Southside Drive-In, I guess it was, University Boulevard, um, off of University Boulevard and Phelps Highway. And I remember that drive-in theater. I remember, I remember being there with my, my, um, my father and my stepmother. Uh, and a great memory. Uh, I was eating plums, okay? You can think about it was, great thing about drive-in, you know, was... You would you would see you'd see the you know the, the film outside on a screen seen in a car so you know you could you could eat food or whatever and, and and relax in your car and watch the movie so I got the tail end of that experience okay drive-ins were already going away throughout the United States but in the late 70s I can say that I've been uh, had been uh, to drive-in theaters uh, I liked Midway um, and I liked uh, the um, uh, Phillips Highway University Boulevard one. And, uh, you know, so, so great times uh, back then that people uh, could have. Uh, more opportunities, I think, sometimes for theaters um, and for how you viewed uh, and, and went about getting uh, your entertainment. And also in music, I really started to listen to music big time back during this time the late 70s, early 80s, and I loved Y103, okay? Y103, uh, lots of pop, disco, real upbeat uh, music. We really, at that time, I got a, a feeling of a lot of upbeat music, okay? And really enjoying that. Um, you know, of course, you know, back then, people were disco dancing, okay? I mean, I liked, you know, Blondie. Uh, I liked... Uh, the Bee Gees, okay, um, Pablo Cruz, um, you know, uh, Steve Miller Band, okay, the Eagles, um, City to City, Baker Street, okay, City to City, huge uh, album that come out the year prior, um, uh, City to City, uh, you know, with uh, Jerry Rafferty, okay, so I want to thank you all for watching, it's been great, I hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy. See ya. Later.